Hello, my name is Grace Olakani and today I will be responding to photography changes and alters what we want and what we see. Photography can play on our emotions and desires. Images can be captured for the true purpose of bringing awareness and seeing what we don't see every day. For example, war images. It doesn't mean that people are going to cry when they see these images, but viewing the images can have people thinking. That's what I love about photography. It provokes your thoughts and makes you wonder about different things like how the images were shot, where the images were shot, why the images were shot and when the images were shot. Sometimes images are not taken to provoke our emotions, but looking at some images can trigger our emotions due to our emotional traumas or experience. Say, for example, a photo of a baby. Some people can look at these images and think, oh, what a cute baby. But some couples have a hard time conceiving children and they can look at these images and think, it's unfortunate that it's not easy to have children and may get emotional. This means photographs are all about perspectives and the relationship the viewer has with the object or subject of an image, which can create different reactions from people. Don't get me wrong, some of these images are for the sole purpose of provoking people's emotions and will sometimes manipulate the images to get a reaction from the viewers and play with their minds. Is it wrong? Sometimes. Ethically. Because some images that are captured are not real, yet look real or they are exaggerated so the viewer can purchase something. We have all seen those adverts on TV where they record kids in poor countries suffering. And in your head, you're thinking, why are they not doing anything about it? They're recording but not doing anything. That's how they want you to feel. They want you to feel bad and guilty so you can help or purchase something. Again, using imagery to play with our emotions the same way they use our desires for imagery. I believe that the media uses our desires to sell an image or product. For example, advert imagery. Photography and cinematics are used in advertising and can tell you how you want something by the way they advertise products to you. Some companies use the gaze as an advertiser strategy for the imagery. According to a website called theconversation.com, the gaze is a term that describes how viewers engage with visual media. This can be the female gaze or the male gaze. Today, I will be talking about mostly the male gaze. The male gaze usually empowers men and sexualizes women, hence why there are many debates about the male gaze. In advertising, a lot of images make women out to be an object rather than human, feeding on men's desire Um, of females and some men will buy the product due to these images because that is what they desire a woman not the actual product so not the actual product so they will just buy it thinking a woman can be will be all over them once they purchase that product but this is not true at all what this is is false advertising but due to the way the imagery made them feel they believe it and they will buy it This technique has been in the media for many years and was recognised a lot more than the 90s. Again, what they always do, they empower men and they devalue women, which is bad because they are objectifying women and yet it has not stopped. Why? Because it works. Tom Ford is a luxury brand launched in 2006 by Thomas Colley a designer, producer, and film director. Clearly, this guy is very creative. He created the first fragrance for men, which was shot by the photographer Terry Richardson in 2007, which caused a lot of, a lot of controversies due to the way the female in the advert was objectified and sexualized for the sake of the product. Here are three images of photographs made for Tom Ford. In the image you will notice that the model is fully naked and has the ideal body of a woman in this generation. 
The model is wearing red nails and red lipstick, which draws attention to the viewer's eyes. Red also symbolizes love, seduction, danger, and adventures. The, if you look closely, you can see that oil has been smoothed across the model's body. And also in the image, the woman is in erotic poses. I can only imagine what's going on in some men's heads. In the image, the perfume is right in between the model's vagina and breast, which makes you automatically view the perfume. It's smart, but it's very degrading to a woman. Also, in the image, there is a bold text that says Tom Ford for men, and there are absolutely no men in the photo, just a naked body. It was just used to change the narrative of a story, which I um, think changes the whole narrative because you would think, oh, this is for females. Then you look at the title and think, oh, it's for men. Um, it's crazy how they only used a woman's body to sell a male product. I believe these shots were used also to spark conversation all over the media so people can talk about it and know what Tom Ford's brand is all about. As they say, good press or bad press is still press. Tom Ford was asked to give his opinion on these images and he stated that there's nothing stronger and more powerful than a beautiful woman. What Tom Ford is doing here is using buzzwords of feminism to justify his action and avoid further controversies because if he said the wrong words, it could ruin the brand. I do wonder if these are actually his real thoughts about these erotic images or not because he could easily make it up. In my opinion, I see why these strategies are done, again, because it works. Those in the media create these type of images because they know humans have desires of how they want to look, smell or be. And this might be because of the way we view society and how society affects all of us. But we all have a desire to be what we are not currently. Some people's desire is about money. Some people's desire is sex or females. And if we have those desires, the media will continue to use those desires as a marketing strategy because nine out of 10 times it never fails. Overall, I believe photography is a great tool to alter what we see and what we want because psychologically, photographs control the market and economics, which affects every, our everyday lives. Thank you for listening.